Now available is this breathtaking illustration of Reese, the androgynous boy standing in front of an explosion of candy and happiness. Illustrated by Kei Shigatsu. Support the channel by getting one yourself in a variety of choices and colors. Now available on the merch store. Links are in the description. Hi there! It's me again, Negative Legend. So recently I did a video about why anime fans like traps, and when making that video I knew there was going to be a few problems, a few little bit of a controversies coming up when making that video, so I figured before I get into the meat of this video I'd address those really quick. First of all, <clears throat> This paper's blank, and it's just a prop. First of all, uh, I said transgenders and not transgender people, and I live in a pretty conservative area, and that has never been a problem with me saying that before in the past, even when I was around my transgender friends. I don't know if I actually said it around them, but it was it never came up as a problem. It could just be a side effect of where I live. But if it makes you feel better saying if I say transgender people, Sure, that's not hard. The second thing that I saw in the comments section was that a lot of people were upset that I said traps, and it's understandable. It's an uncomfortable word, I get it. But I was talking about it in the video. It was the entire subject. I had to say it. I'm not, I don't say it that often outside of that video. It's a necessary evil. However, during the making of that video, I was introduced to this thing called Otokonoko, which is actually the Japanese term that they use for what we have been really using for what we call traps. It started somewhere in the early 2000s, and it literally means male daughter. What's surprising is that when I search online, and when I was searching online for content for the trap video, I would always see someone comment, I'm gonna be that guy, it's otokonoko. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't know what that is. I just thought they were smashing their keyboard. But there have been some people who will push that we should be saying otokonoko, because it's the word that the Japanese use for this kind of thing, instead of traps, which is a little bit dicey and is a slur for transgenders. And we don't use it for transgenders, but it's still a slur. So some people like to say that they don't want to change it to otoko no ko because traps have become the standard word. But I mean, like, we use a ton of Japanese words already. We know yandere, kudere, tsundere, all the different deres, sensei, senen, sho. We know shoujo, Aimoto, shonen, chibi, 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 We are speaking a lot of Japanese in this community. I mean, it's not too far-fetched for some people to ask for us to start saying another Japanese word, especially since we're degenerates that like saying that stuff. I think the real aversion to using this is, one, it's a little bit more difficult to say, I'm gonna be frank, when you read the romaji, or how it's typed out in English, it looks difficult and confusing. Reading the kanji, behold, the kanji, it makes a lot more sense. You have to know how to read kanji, though. Not a lot of us know how. Otoko no ko doesn't really roll off the tongue. I've been saying it a lot in preparation for this video, so I say it no problem. And I am in a Japanese class, and I talked about Harajuku, and I told my teacher that I discovered Otoko no ko, and when we were talking about the different fashion styles of Harajuku. So, that was an interesting conversation. Now this term is actually used in Japan. You'll find videos of maid cafes, but the twist for that one is that it's an Otoko no ko cafe. So, Otoko no ko ってゲイでもない、オカマでもない、ニューハーフでもない。All the employees are dudes dressed as girls. And you'll see videos of them talking about why they started dressing the way they do, what got them interested in makeup, all those things, etc, etc. It's actually kind of interesting because you'll find that the main clientele of these sort of maid cafes is actually women. Now, I had never been told about Otokonoko until I was showing this video off to some friends and literally one person mentioned it. So it's not a commonly used term for us over here. Perhaps it's common in Japan, but I don't see anyone using it here. Unless I'm an idiot. That is a very poss a very strong possibility. Now in the places I go, in the chat rooms I go to, a lot of people will use the term trap when talking about 
the archetype of dudes dressed as girls. And so we're exposed to it a lot more, which pushes us to use it a lot more because we don't want to seem weird and out of the loop and trying to word our way around it when we have a shortcut method uh, that everyone will know of to describe the thing that we are thinking about. So in order to normalize the word otoko no ko, and I'm saying it a lot in this video because I said trap a lot in the previous video, which I get is super uncomfortable, so I'm trying to balance it out in this video by making you guys exposed to otoko no ko. I think in order to make it more exposed is to start reading manga that actually utilize that term. And the big reason why I wanted to make this video is because I found a manga that actually covers this entire topic. Love me for who I am. It's a new manga where the main character is androgynous that is offered to work at a otoko no ko cafe. And they use the term otoko no ko. I'm gonna be throwing that in your face this entire video. Prepare yourself, you're gonna get annoyed. They use that word commonly throughout the manga. And at least for me, I got used to, to reading it just by reading this one volume. I didn't care for the word until reading this manga. I also process things better if I read them, so that's also a thing for me. May not be a thing for you. The best part about this manga is that it explores all the different concepts around this topic, like dre cross-dressing for fun, or being androgynous, or, uh, well, also actually transgenderism? Is that a word? being transgender. And for these characters, it shows how the term otoko no kok has been freeing for them and has allowed them to express themselves in all these different ways where outside of the cafe they work at, they would otherwise not be able to. And just reading the first volume did actually a really good job at delivering the mindsets behind each of these characters. I understand this kind of manga may not be that appealing to some of you, but if you have the time, I would at least ask you to try reading the first volume, if nothing else. Just so that you get a better sense of the word and how it became accepted in this subgroup of people. If you ask me, I would like otoko no ko to become the common used term opposed to trap, simply because well, there is weight to the word trap and us in America don't have any weight to the term otoko no ko. It's actually funny. My uh, sensei was telling me about how it's actually also true in the reverse, how they have English words in Japan in order to express difficult concepts that don't carry the same weight as some of the words do in America, but it's a lot less of a heavy word in Japan because it's just a foreign word to them. I'm not gonna say what word because it's a very sensitive topic. Hey, that, that was also an uncomfortable conversation, but it was enlightening. The big issue is that the term trap undermines the feeling of identity. And with this subgroup of people, identity is an extremely important part of their life. So even though I personally don't have a problem with saying that word, I'll actually post stop saying it from this point on because I know I'm saying it a lot because I'm trying to talk about it. I don't have a problem saying that word, but if it is uncomfortable to a decent amount of people, then I have no problem easily switching to otoko no ko. Now, especially since I know the kanji. I like kanji. Reading kanji is so much easier to deal with than katakana. I know a lot of you may not like that statement, but it's true when you're actually learning Japanese. Oh my god. And I think manga and anime translators are also mangaka, should probably explore this topic a bit more, just to make the whole idea a lot more common for us over in, well, I can't say over in the West because that's a very American-centric viewpoint of the whole world since this is Japan and they don't have the same problems we do over in our internet culture. If we can find outlets or entertainment that co more commonly use this term, I think that would be the best alternative for this kind of problem. More importantly, like this manga, I think more of these manga and anime should explore the concepts of identity and w the motivations behind why characters do this. If you're into the whole LGBT rights thing, this is a really good manga to read. And it does really annoy me when a lot of these anime characters are used as a, just a joke of, oh man, they look like one gender, but they're really a different gender. Whoa! Like, yeah, it's funny to a certain degree seeing the reaction of the main character, but other than that, it should be delved in deeper than just a surface level joke. With that being said, that's everything I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're not too upset with me with my previous video because I am covering very 
uh, dicey topics, but I feel like not enough people are actually talking about this stuff and I'm willing to take the bullet. Literally every time I post one of these videos, I lose like 200 subscribers and then I have to wait for it to go back up. It's, it's shocking how immediate the reaction is. So please share these videos. I am le legitimately taking a bullet for th these videos. I have a Twitter, I have a Patreon, and I have merchandise that you can buy to support the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay beautiful and keep playing.